All right, so let's get going with lesson 30. Uh, this is going to be our third out of five lessons on section 8.3 vectors. So what's a unit vector? A unit vector is a vector of length 1, and there's an infinite number of unit vectors. And we will either ask for the unit vector in the same direction as a given vector or a unit vector in the opposite direction of a given vector. But when you're done, make sure your answer has a magnitude of 1. In other words, if you were to square the x and square the y and add them up, you should get 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So to find a unit vector in the same direction as a given unit, and, uh, a given vector, in this, in this case vector a, the unit vector, which we use a small u for, you find the magnitude of the vector, and then you multiply the vector by its reciprocal. So if the vector had a magnitude of 5, you would multiply it by 1 fifth. That way you cut it down by a factor of 5, which gives you a vector with length 1. If we want a unit vector in the opposite direction, we just simply multiply it by negative 1 over the magnitude. And we're going to show you some examples of that, but think about it. The vector has a magnitude of 7, and you multiply it by 1 7th, it'll now have a magnitude of 1. A unit vector has a magnitude of 1. All right, so we're given vector a is 6i minus 7j. We want to find a unit vector in the same direction and a unit vector in the opposite direction, the first thing you have to do is find the magnitude of A. In other words, find the length of vector A. And to find the magnitude of a vector, you square the x, you square the y, you add them up, and you take the square root of it. So it's square root 85, and we'll leave that as square root 85. We are not going to uh, use the decimal approximation for that. And to find a unit vector in the same direction, we multiply the vector a by 1 over its magnitude, 1 over the square root of 85. And it, it's ugly answer. Look at that. It's 6 over square root of 85 i minus 7 over square root of 85 j. But that's a unit vector in the same direction as the original vector. If you square the x and you square the y and add them up, you'll get 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Once you found the unit vector in the same direction as the original, finding the unit vector in the opposite direction simply means multiply through by negative 1. So I can just take that unit vector and just multiply through by negative 1, and I get negative 6 over square root of 85i plus 7 over square root of 85j. That's a unit vector in the opposite direction, and it has a magnitude of 1. Square the x, square the y, add them up, prove it to yourself. All right, let's knock out some questions here. Um, if you want to make something twice the magnitude or half the magnitude, all you do is multiply through by 2 or multiply through by a half. If you want it in the opposite direction, you multiply by negative 2 or multiply by negative a half. Don't overcomplicate this rather simple question. So if I want to find a vector with twice the magnitude of b in the same direction, I multiply through by 2. If I want to find one with half the magnitude as b in the same direction, I multiply through by a half, no matter how ugly that answer might be. And that's it. You move on with your life. Don't overcomplicate this rather simple uh, process. And then if I want to find one in the opposite direction, twice the magnitude, I multiply by negative 2. And if I want to find one in the opposite direction uh, with half the magnitude, I multiply by negative a half. And you get, you get the opposite of the answers you, you got there in A and B. Don't over, if we want twice the magnitude or three times the magnitude or four times the magnitude, just multiply and you're done. Don't overcomplicate this. Students tend to get these simple instructions confused with what we're about to do. All right. This is I'm saying. We're gonna, we tend to get these confused with the previous example. This says find a vector with a magnitude of 5 that has the same direction as C and the opposite direction as C. When we're done, we want to... We want a vector that has a magnitude of 5. In other words, if you square the x and square the y of your final answer, add them up, you better get 25, square root of 25 being 5. What we're going to do here is find the unit vector. The unit vector has a magnitude of 1, and then my plan then is to multiply that by 5. So there's a little bit of a process involved here. This is not the same what we just did. We just said find a vector that had twice the magnitude in the previous example. Now we're saying when we're done, we want this answer to have a magnitude of 5. There's a difference between those two. Well, the first step is to find the unit vector in the same direction. Well, to find that, the first thing we have to do is find the actual magnitude of vector c. So we square the x, we square the y, we add them up, we take the square root, and we have rather a nice one here, 13. So now that I have the magnitude of c, I can find the unit vector in the same direction. 
And as we did before, the unit vector in the same direction, you multiply 1 13th times the vector, and you end up with 5 thirteenths i minus 12 thirteenths j. That's a unit vector in the same direction as the original. It has a magnitude of 1. That's what a unit vector has, magnitude of 1. If you square the x and square the y, add them up, you'll get 1. Now I want to find a vector that has a magnitude of 5. So I simply multiply the unit vector by 5. 5 times u, 5u, would give me a, a vector with magnitude of 5. I drag a 5 through there. I get 25 over 13th i minus 60 over 13th j. If you square that x and you square that y and add them up, you'll get 25. Square root of 25 is 5. We have found a vector with a magnitude of 5 in the same direction as the original. Now, if I want to find a vector of magnitude 5 in the opposite direction, I simply go negative 5 times the unit vector. So we end up with negative 25 thirteenths i plus 60 thirteenths j. Same process. Just find the unit vector, multiply it by negative 5 instead of a positive 5. These vectors have a magnitude of 5. So to recap, if we give you some vector, for instance, 3, negative 4, and I ask for the unit vector, you have to find the magnitude of a, which in this case is 5, uh, and then you multiply the vector by 1 over 5, or 1 over its magnitude. The unit vector has a magnitude of 1. If I want to find a vector that has 7 times the magnitude, I multiply the vector by 7, and I'm done. 21 comma negative 28 is in the same direction as the original, and has 7 times the magnitude. Then what gets confused with that is part C here, find a vector with a magnitude of 7. That's 7 times the unit vector. So go back to your unit vector, times it by 7, and there you go. Stare at these for a minute. And stop the video if you have to. But these are B and C, we get confused quite often, and there's a, there's a distinct difference between the two. All right, for something you're going to see on the homework here, um, if I give you a series of forces and ask for the resultant force or the net force, you just add up all the x's and up all the y's. Before, we were always giving you two forces and said find the net force, you add up both x's. What if we give you ten forces? You add up all the x's, add up all the y's, and you come up with the net force. Now, if the net force ends up to be zero, or in this case, zero comma zero, then it's in equilibrium. We say that's it, it's in equilibrium. In other words, it's not moving. There's nothing going on here. All right? So here are three forces, uh, F1, F2, and F3, and we want to find the net force. So it's, it's only a little more complicated than if I had given you two forces. You have to add up negative 8 and 2 and 1. There's your horizontal component of the net force. Negative 1 and 9 and 6 get added up, and there's the vertical component of your net force. So what if you wanted to add an additional force as the equilibrium occurs? So we want to add an additional fourth g to the system so that we have zero. In other words, we'd have zero comma zero. So what would that force g be? Well, you look at the net force, negative 5, 14, and you ask yourself, what would I add to this to end up with zero comma zero? And again, hopefully you didn't use your calculators, you would add 5, negative 14. And that's because f plus g would then be zero, zero. So you find the net force, add the opposite, and you've got equilibrium. We're going to do that as a problem again, only with a slightly different uh, format. All right, same problem as before, only this time we're showing it to you on a Cartesian plane. We have two forces, F1 and F2. F1 is a magnitude of 7 at 130 degrees from the positive x-axis. And um, F2 has a magnitude of 6 and it is at 120 degrees in the negative rotation. They show that as a positive 120, but really it's negative 120, or you could say it's 240 degrees from the positive x-axis. And we want to find the net force. In other words, we want to find the horizontal and vertical component of the resultant. So I'm going to do the vector method here. That's the only way to come up with the horizontal and vertical component. And I do 7 cosine 130, 7 sine 130. And then for F2, you got to be careful here. That's not a positive 120 degrees. That's 6 cosine negative 120, 6 sine negative 120. You could use 240 degrees if you want to. It, it has the same sine and cosine as negative 120 degrees. But you couldn't use a positive 120. So I pull out my calculator and I get F1 to be negative 4.5 and comma 5.4 and F2 is negative 3 exactly 
and negative 5.2 and then I just add up the X's and add the Y's. So our net force is negative 7.50 comma uh, 0 0.17. And after we find our net force F, the question is find an additional force G such that equilibrium occurs. In other words, what would you add to F since you end up with 0 comma 0? And again, hopefully you're not going to use your calculator on this part. So we'll just add the opposite, negative 7.5 comma 0.17. If I want to make that, if I want to add another force to it to make it zero, I'll add 7.5 comma negative 0.17. There you go. So those last two examples are pretty much the same thing. So we just showed them to them in two different formats. Well, that wraps up lesson 30. Oh my gosh, there's only 40 lessons in the whole course, so we're, we're winding things down here. Um, get to work on the homework. If you have any questions, make sure you come in and see your instructor.